Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in! Today, we're gonna have some fun to say the least. Behind me is a 1988 Chevrolet Camaro IROC Z convertible. This is an upcoming project to the YouTube channel. Now that I'm finally wrapping up some of the other projects, I'm making plans and trying to come up with new ideas to bring some fresh content to the channel, and I happened upon this car a little while back. It's been sitting in this shed for probably the last decade or so, and it's getting harder and harder Harder to find IROCs in decent shape, let alone a convertible, which is pretty cool. So we're going to rescue this car. I don't have any specific goals or ideas in mind as far as the build itself. That will be figured out later on. We're just going to get it out of its hiding place and get it over back to the shop and do a thorough detailing which I have been looking so forward to I love detailing so we're gonna see just how well this thing shines up and be able to get a much better look at you know what we have right here because it's been sitting outside for so long it's pretty well moldy you almost can't see the color in certain spots but anyway let's go ahead and uh, you know check it out a little bit this car is equipped with the entry model engine for IROCs in 1988. It's a 5 liter V8 with electronic fuel injection, basically a throttle body fuel injected motor. It makes 170 horsepower of 4,400 RPM. Now there were two other motors available as well. You can get a 5 liter V8 with the tuned port fuel injection system, and that put out 220 horsepower at 4,400 RPM when equipped with the standard 5 speed manual transmission. If you got the optional automatic transmission, it dropped that number to 100. 195 horsepower. The top dog was a tune port fuel injected 5.7 liter V8 and that put out 230 horsepower at 4,400 RPM. The only downside with the 5.7 liter is that you could not get it with a manual transmission. The 4 speed overdrive automatic transmission was the only option available. So being that this is the entry model engine, there leaves a lot to be desired as far as performance is concerned, so I may end up doing something a bit more powerful, not quite sure yet, but the gears are definitely turning in my head. What I find really cool though is this car looks for the most part to be unmolested, especially in the engine bay. It's all in its original configuration, just filthy. You can actually see the fuel injection sticker on top of the air cleaner. So it is really nice to see something like this. Somebody hasn't gone in and tried to butcher it or do a carb swap or something like that. It looks exactly as the factory intended it. So that's going to make it a little bit easier as far as, you know, diving in and figuring out what to do next. The history of the IROC Z is pretty cool. In short, IROC stands for International Race of Champions, and when this race first kicked off in 1973, it was basically a gathering of the best of the best in all the racing circuits to compete against one another using the same cars, and they did this for a number of years, but of course, like any kind of racing, it was a costly venture, so instead of using Porsches and whatnot, in 1975, the drivers actually switched over to using Camaro Z28s. Now, after that, there was a hiatus with the race, and it was then rebooted in 1984. That's when Chevrolet decided to offer a commemorative version of the Camaro called the IROC Z. At the time, it was a trim level of the Z28, so if you decided to opt for the IROC package, you got a Z28 with a whole bunch of cool stuff added to it, like upgraded suspension components, a modified struts in front, uh, larger diameter sway bars, and all sorts of other stuff, and they continued to improve it over the years with giving it more power, more engine options, so on and so forth. In 1988, when Chevrolet actually dropped the Z28 from the lineup, the IROC Z became its own standalone model, and then it would then be produced through the 1990 model year. So the IROC Z was only produced for five years, and they weren't sold in super large numbers. Like it was relatively small compared to the rest of the Camaro lineup, which makes it that much more special when you come across one that hasn't been beaten into the ground. 
All right, now let's bring her home. Alright, let's see how well she shines up! Before we get started, I'd like to give a big shout out to O'Reilly Auto Parts for supporting the channel. One of the things I'll be doing over the course of this video is checking out their newest line of Pro X1 detailing products. With a complete line of products from glass and wheel and tire cleaners, car wash, ceramic wax, detailer, and tire shine, Pro X1 offers surface treatments that are not only easy on your wallet, but make for a long lasting premium appearance. Learn more about Pro X1 products via the link in the description box below.
This thing is turning out really good so far. It's had a respray in the past. I don't think it's a base coat clear coat, leaning more towards a single stage enamel, but considering how long it had sat and how much stuff was growing on it, it's come out really, really nice so far. Now that it's drying, I'm gonna get it into the shop and start with the clay bar and then buff it. We'll see how shiny she can get. With all of the surface contaminants removed, I wanted to go ahead and start buffing the paint and do a three-step process, compound, polish, and wax. But once I started compounding the hood, I noticed very quickly that the damage done by all of that mold and algae that was stuck to the car was far more severe than I thought it was. So much so that my extra cut compound just will not cut it down enough. I spent so much time on one side of the hood just trying to get rid of that stuff and I, I barely made a dent in it so I actually think the best course of action here is going to be wet sanding the entire car I've already done a couple little test spots and it's turning out really really nice so I think even though it's going to be a whole lot more elbow work the results are going to be so much better I ordered a huge variety of wet dry sandpaper to do all of the wet sanding so while I wait for all that stuff to come in, I'm going to turn my attention to this disgusting interior.
Well, everyone, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed watching the transformation on this 88 IROC Z. Now, the car still needs a lot of restoration work inside. You know, the paint's still not perfect. It doesn't run, but considering the state that it was in, it turned out so good, and I could not be more proud. Plus, I don't know if you noticed, but I ended up swapping out the wheels and tires. The old ones, which weren't factory, obviously, just, just did not not work with how good the rest of this car looks so I had planned on swapping out my wheels on uh, the 89 s10 project at some point so just for the sake of this video I went ahead and took the wheels off that truck and put it on this they're basically Monte Carlo SS wheels from like the late 80s and the tires are practically new so got a fresh wheel and tire set up and it didn't cost any money plus they look really good on the car I'm really excited to start diving into this car more heavily, but like I said at the beginning of the video, I've got a lot of other projects that need to be finished first before I can actually get into this. So if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so and make sure that notification box is selected because I've got a lot of project content coming and car reviews, just a lot of fun things. So I really appreciate it. A big thanks once again to O'Reilly Auto Parts for all of their support. To stay in the know on what's happening with the channel and upcoming videos, don't forget to check out all of my social media platforms. It's SobKyle04 LLC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll keep you guys posted on any IROC developments in the meantime. Otherwise, I've got some more work to do on something else. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.